I'm Jane Hallis from Area 7, and I'm going to move through uh, some slides rather quickly just to share with you some ideas and experiences that we had in recruiting uh, uh, members of the Order of the Arrow. It's a rich uh, pool of, of scouts that have uh, a reason to be interested in Sea Scouts, but they need to hear about it first. So let me be the first one to say that, yes, on the, the life ring there, there it says seascouts.org with an S where it shouldn't be. Um, we actually put that together while we were um, out in the woods getting ready for this. It was a last minute prop and we made that mistake, but it's been corrected. Good to have somebody uh, proofread your stuff before you, before you go public with it. Uh, okay, next. So one of the things that we have going for us is unique draws attention. And when you are in blue uniforms and everybody else is in brown, we are unique right from the start. So build on that uh, because we do want to draw their attention. Uh, recruitment begins when you arrive. Look sharp in your uniform. Use the bosun pipes to assemble your scouts. Even if you only have one scout with you and they're standing next to you, blowing the bosun pipe uh, is another way of getting attention, and most people associate that sound with something nautical. So it kind of gives them a heads up and they'll start turning and looking your way. Carry some Sea Scout business cards with you, uh, be ready to hand them out, and then be prepared. Have a script or talking points, really, for any scouts that are with you to uh, use while they're talking to the other scouts that are at the OA Conclave. Make sure you have a sign up sheet to capture some names and contact information, and then have a plan for follow-up. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Next. So this is a, a way to be unique. This is a campsite at an OA conclave of a ship. They made their campsite look like a Sea Scout camp. One of the cool things they did was put uh, glow sticks in the stanchions that uh, lit up at night. It was a safety thing. So nobody tripped over it, but it, it clearly declared that this, there's something different about this group, and it was a great conversation starter. Next. This is one of the things that we had at our, our booth. It was a photo opportunity booth. You want something that's going to be big and bold and stands up above the crowd. And so we made a backdrop um, out of some very cheap vinyl from Party City. Uh, made it seven feet tall. We figured nobody could be taller than that. Uh, we made this on a PVC frame. We had the two panels overlap, but not, and everything was using duct tape, and we had overlapping panels with places for the wind to escape because there was a breeze, and, and it just would have been a constant problem without that um, escape flap. And then do put a URL and on a backdrop so that it's in every photo and spell it correctly. Next. So we put up the sign. It said, grab a prop, strike a pose. And as scouts walked by, we would hand them a prop and invite them to come in. And we would say, got a cell phone? We'll take a picture for you. And so we did. We had many, many people respond positively to that. It became one of the most fun events. We had a, a line of scouts waiting to come and, and strike a pose and get a photo taken. Next. So we gathered props. Um, popular things were hats, since you can buy those at novelty places or places they sell, sell costumes. Orange PFDs, we learned, uh, show up better. They were the first ones grabbed by most people, even though that's not the first one most people want to wear on the water. Um, the ring buoy was a popular thing, and it did give us a place to put the URL. A spyglass, a little wooden ship's wheel that we got from a hobby show, an eye patch from a Halloween costume. Oh, and then we had our burgee on a pole. Um, I don't think it's visible in this photo. But you could add to it, you, you know what kind of things would make a, a nautical-related prop. Next. Oh, and encourage adult participation. 
some of the scouts would hang back at first, but then I would hand a prop to one of the adults and say, come on, show them how to do it. And then the adults got into it. And then the uh, scouts would get um, encouraging of the adults and it would, they all would start to get silly and it would get loud and they would, uh, and they'd be laughing and having a good time. And while they were doing that, they were standing in line waiting to hear, waiting for their turn. But while they were standing in line, they were also right next to that display board that you can see in the other photograph. And they were hearing about Sea Scouts from uh, some of our youth members. Next. So the things we learned about the photo booth was that um, selfies didn't really work because it didn't show the props. It worked better to have somebody else taking the, the photo, but you use the scout cell phone so that they take that photo home with them, and they've got that seascout.org right there in the photo on their phone. Um, make the props visible, put them towards the front of the booth wherever people are walking by, and you can stand there and hand the props to somebody who's kind of lingering for a moment and, and invite them in. And by handing them something that you usually had them step forward and get engaged in conversation with us. One of the things that we didn't have, but we should have, was a bin for the scout gear, their own gear, um, to put that down someplace while they were closing for the photo. Most of them already had uh, small backpacks or they were carrying around other objects. And it's just a good idea to have a, a big box there to hold those. And then you can take photos with your own camera to share later. Um, and you can have a clipboard there and say, if you want me to send you a link to the photographs, put your contact information here, give me your email. That also gets you uh, some contact information to do follow up with. Next. The other thing we did was have a short, simple game uh, just to lengthen the the time that they stayed in the booth lingered a little bit and made it more interactive. Uh, it's good to have one that will, can one person can do or a small group can do together. It'd be good to have a, a game that has a nautical skill, but something that can be done by most scouts. Don't make it something tough um, because then sea scouts become something that uh, we're showing off what we know and it makes it unreachable for them. Give simple little prizes. Uh, for, for accomplishing the game, and then you celebrate each win loudly, again, trying to draw the attention of other scouts that have not yet come over to your area. And then encourage the scouts to challenge each other and their adult leaders, and, and that uh, as a, a extra excitement for them, makes them engage even more when they're challenging their adult leaders to do the game. And there's a number of simple games you can do with this, Here's one we use most recently. Uh, next. Next slide. Yeah, this is just um, a heating line. We had a monkey's fist, and we uh, have a two by four with a painted target on it. And they can do that within you know a minute or two. And you can make up the rules as you wish. It's something everybody can do. But while they're doing it, they you can talk to them about heating lines, what new heating lines, you know what. Well, throw bags are as relate to heating line uh, gives you a chance to talk about some nautical lore. Next, uh, your display table, place it where they can see it while they're waiting in line to be either in the game or on the photo booth. Uh, on the display table, show your local sea scouts in action. So that makes it real that yes, this is happening in our area and yes, that's something that we can do. Have information on there for all different ages, youth and adults. Uh, again, collect your contact info on a clipboard and have a Sea Scout ready to answer questions that they may have or to approach them even if they don't have questions and just offer them the information. Next. Here's a closer look at our display board. Um, I won't go into great depth in it here, but you can see on the far right, we've got some of the high adventure things, the, the eagle, uh, scuba, um, the Coke cup. And then right above that on that far right, 
uh, we have a service project because we wanted to connect with them in a way that was familiar to them. So yeah, we do service projects too. Next. And here's where we showed things that they probably don't do or don't associate with scouting. So this is one of our ships, ship number three in Swansboro, where uh, they do surfing. And one of the things I wish I'd put on here was the name of the council, because I was surprised how many scouts um, would see the name of a town and not know if that was anywhere near them. But if they had seen the name of the council, then they could connect with it. So in the future, we'll have uh, the ship name, the name of the town, and the name of the council. Next. Here's another one just showing uh, a local group in a local area that's accessible to them and a skill that they can do that's not too unfamiliar. Next. More local uh, scouts showing different skills, different kind of activities that are not out of reach for the scouts in our area, but yet give them a little bit more challenge and stretches them beyond what they've learned so far in Boy Scouts. Next. So what we learned from our display board is that we needed to um, have a flyer or a card with contact info for all the local Sea Scout ships. Because this was at an OA conclave, we should have had um, all of the contact information for every ship within our area. Uh, one way to do another thing that was good was to have a, a map with uh, marks where existing ships are. And then we had uh, pins where people could put where they were wanting to to uh, find a ship. We also had pins that I got from uh, ref referrals from the Via Scout. Um, we put those pins on the map as well. So people could see and adults could see where there were boys who were wanting to, to uh, join a ship and it became readily apparent that there wasn't a ship close by. So I think we could take that map idea even a little bit further and, and uh, make a visual that would begin to help connect people. And then the uh, document that I, that uh, TW made, the Sea Scouts for Scout Masters, I think um, having one laminated copy of that just to engage them and see it, um, it's rather lengthy to have a bunch of them to, to hand out, but having one and then giving them something with the, the link on it that they can take with them and look at the, uh, the document more in depth. And now that we have the YouTube, it would be great to have that on a link to that on the paper that they can take away as well. So they can look at it later. Not always a power of source out there in the woods to to be able to run um, YouTube continuously, but that would be another idea. Next. OA conclaves aren't the only place to find uh, scouts that might want to uh, join in Sea Scouts if they know about them. Eagle Banquet is a good place. Lots of councils have those. Next. University of Scouting, we always put up a display there. Plus, we have a college of Sea Scouting within our University of Scouting for both um, adults and youth as teachers and learners. Next. Flag ceremonies whenever you can. Get visibility. Next. And reach down to the younger scouts. Yeah, they're too young to join Sea Scouts, but I've known Cub Scouts who have made getting Eagle their goal. Why not have joining Sea Scouts become their goal? They can't make it their goal if they don't hear about it. So seek some opportunities to work with the younger scouts as well. Next. So focus on the unique, to get attention, show that Sea Scouts is doable, whatever it takes for your area. Um, give some resources 
that they can take with them so they can learn more. Follow up on your contacts promptly, and you don't have to be the one doing all the follow-up. Work with your scouts ahead of time and have a plan to make some uh, emails or phone call follow-up. And then build relationships with any of the adult contacts that had that showed of interest. That's going to be key to getting new ships started as well as getting more uh, the Boy Scouts who are in a way interested. And it goes without saying that now that we as Sea Scouts can, are eligible for OA, that it's important to wear your OA flap on your uniform, pocket flap. We actually have one designed for our Sea Scouts in our area. And so having, having the pocket flap and the OA sash on top of the Sea Scout uniform is another one of those unique things that that make people look and ask questions. And that's a great opportunity to have conversations. 